one we are live now <clears throat> guys thank you thank you so much for coming over this morning i think all of you are from different places in the us uh three of you are in the health and fitness industry whereas liz is in the apparel and fashion industry i will introduce the woman on the panel first amanda because amanda came in first uh, she was at the webinar at 6:55 uh, 5 minutes before 9:30 uh, uh amanda thank you so much for coming over this morning amanda is a vp of business development in sakara uh, they focus on plant based diet they want to make you uh, make you better have a healthy life using plant based uh, plant based diet they're supplying plant based food and uh, recipes and um, and dishes across uh, i think in in the us and um, she has been a yoga teacher a registered yoga teacher for 9 years and uh, she is extremely passionate about health and plant based uh, diet uh, vegan so they say uh, uh, amanda thank you so much for coming over we are most welcome on this panel thank you thank you uh, liz uh the second one the second one to come on this panel and she came in and she hijacked the discussion with uh, amanda uh <laughs> liz is again a fabulous person here uh, she is in the business of um, uh making sleepwear for women uh, she makes uh, women more comfortable in the night uh makes them fancy uh, uh nightwear and also a lot of apparel and fashion biz the uh, fashion work that she does in lunia at lunia and she's a growth marketer she helps companies grow from here to there to the sky uh using her marketing skills and a lot of other skills which she possess and she studied a ba in economics and advertising and she's also an mba from mba uh, from marketing from duke university liz thank you so much for coming over this morning my pleasure thanks for having me yep matt hyder just finished his breakfast uh and he is a fitness expert uh he uh he makes people fit he, he he's a he's a founder and ceo of recoup fitness and um, they provide uh, uh products for muscle recovery uh, and recovery therapies at home and um, matt um uh, and matt started four he started four businesses before recoup and the all four failed miserably but the fifth one is doing fabulously well and he loves the culture of a startup therefore he always keep businesses keep running businesses keep building businesses and he does not uh he does not get tired and he was featured among uh among uh, the top 30 successful people under 30 uh, he was featured in reader reader digest he was also featured in entrepreneur 360 denver post and he is an al alumni of colorado university Matt, thank you so much for coming over this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Appreciate it. Thank you, thank you, Andy. Our uh, uh, our 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 model uh, on this panel. He was primarily a model before uh, before he was running this company, and he's a skin care specialist. He has a lot of fantastic products for your skin. You can see his skin is glowing at the moment. He's beaming to be on this webinar, and. Uh, he 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 makes people uh, go natural using his skin uh, who who can because his skin care products are very natural and um, he he was in the modeling and acting business then he met with a small accident and he came into the business of uh, making your skin glow uh, like his uh, 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 thank you so much uh, andy for coming over this morning thank you for having me glad to be here wonderful excellent guys uh, we're going to have fun for next 60 to 70 minutes um so i would request you for your hand and for your leg uh, basically your phone uh, if you can keep your phone aside uh, the the we will have full attention and we'll have fun uh amanda why are you doing from from being a yoga teacher to now supplying vegan diets uh, in the us uh, what's your why why are you doing what you're doing <clears throat> well actually um professionally before i came to sakara i was um a partner at tau group which um some people in the in the panel maybe or in the in the audience may be familiar with we um built nightclubs hotels restaurants all across the country and now the world i was at tau group 
um, from 2005 until 2018 and um, actually became a yoga teacher in my uh, spare time and also a health coach and a meditation teacher. So I used to say that, you know, health and wellness was my really expensive hobby uh, while I was professionally, you know, building nightclubs and throwing parties for Beyonce and feeding people like lots of really unhealthy food. Um, in my personal life, I was totally into, I became um, a vegetarian actually when I was 12 and then um, a vegan when I was 21, although I'm no, no longer vegan, um, but eat you know, primarily um, plant-based and had just done so much research around um, health, wellness, vitality. And um, you know, I want people to have the best lives that they possibly can. And it, it sounds kind of corny, but um, I do believe that if you're not healthy, you know, they say like, if you have your health, you have lots of problems, but if you don't have your health, you only have one problem. Um, because not having health is, you know, it takes over everything else. And I, um, when I was at Tao, despite, you know, being very, um, eating well and doing yoga and all these things in my spare time, my stress was, you know, next level out of control. And it caused a lot of, of, you know, difficulties in my life. Um, and so, you know, when I made the, the decision to switch careers, I said, I want to be able to do what I, what I believe in. I want to be able to talk about, um, you know, I'm a, I'm a communications professional, right? So all day I'm selling, I'm pitching, I'm talking about this product, which now is Sakara Life. And, you know, when, when you talk about something that you really believe in, it makes your job so much more fun and, and so much um, just, you know, you just get to be yourself. So I just, I believe so strongly that health is the cornerstone of everything else you want um, in your life, whether that's love or business success, or, you know, just to have energy to play with your kids. Um, and so, you know, my why is just, you know, any, any, any way that I can encourage people to live a more healthy uh, life with more vitality, more energy. Um, I, I believe I'm, you know, contributing to the, you know, happiness and, and, and well-being of the whole world. So in my little small corner. So that, that's my why. Wonderful. That's an excellent story, Amanda. Uh, yes, health comes first. Uh, health should come first. Health shall come first. Health does come first. Uh, if you are healthy, only then you can help somebody else. And if you're trying to, if your mission is to make the world healthy, uh, it's a fabulous mission to have. Thank you so much. We're glad to have you on the panel. Uh, Andy, over to you. Tell us something more about your business and how have been the last seven months of your business. Are people still, still taking care of their skin in the, in, in the pandemic? Absolutely. <clears throat> so, yeah, I mean, I've, in, in 2011, do you, do you want me to share a little bit about how I started the business or? Yeah. So in 2011, I was crossing the street and I got hit by a westbound heading vehicle, uh, lost consciousness. I got hit in the eastbound lane and then run over by an SUV. Both cars pulled over, uh, first responders cut off my clothes in the middle of the street and took me off, uh, to Cedar Sinai where I woke up in an ICU, uh, bed with my chin going, uh, protruding through the bottom of my mouth. It was a a uh, very bad compound fracture. I broke seven ribs, collapsed along, and it was completely unrecognizable. As you touched on, I was in the entertainment industry at the time and uh, working consistently. And I mean, but at, at, you know, I was just lucky to be alive. You know, people don't survive accidents like that. And so the last thing on my mind was uh, my appearance or uh, my career. But once I, once I uh, got home and my family uh, you know, everybody left. I just, I was kind of just uh, sitting and trying to find a way to, to recover as quick as possible. And so I, my jaw was wired shut. My front teeth were all gone and uh, I had nothing but time. I didn't want to leave the house. And so I just, uh, there's a lot of information available out there to all of us. And um, I just wanted to kind of, I didn't want to be, I had a whole recipe and a routine designed for myself just based on meeting with Chinese herbalists studying spa treatments and also adding my own little creative twist to it where um, just kind of testing a lot of ingredients, kind of just putting together potions to heal myself and accelerate the, the healing of my scarring and my abrasions and which were, I mean, I was, I was unrecognizable within the first couple of weeks. And then I started to uh, my, uh, the, the clay mask, which is now our, our, uh, our pretty much our signature product, but uh, in our original product, but I never had an intention to start a business. Uh, this was purely out of necessity. Um, I use myself basically as my own science, uh, science experiment to see if I could accelerate the healing of my, uh, my abrasions and, and maybe mitigate some of the scarring. And it did that and then some, and we're, um, in a little, a little, 
more than 80 countries now, six years into it. And um, I'm living my dream. You know, I mean, it, the whole the whole point is uh, just to really, your skin is your largest organ. You want to treat it like another mouth. And so, I mean, so many products out there in the initial stages of trying to research uh, and, or buy products that would, that would accelerate my healing. Every product that I saw had some type of hole in it, some type of toxic uh, emulsifier, foaming agent, um, artificial, very harsh, um, government recognized carcinogen, ba you know, it, based ingredients in, in some of their decks. And so I just would remove them and then isolate the active ingredients. And then, and then I would buy those or those in bulk and then uh, start to just make my little potions. I mean, my, my night cream I made out of a cat started out of a cast iron pan, melting down cacao butter, beeswax, sea buckthorn oil, plant derived stem cells, you name it. But it, it was so much fun for me um, because I saw results and um, I'm back. I'm lucky to be alive. I mean, I make no mistake. I, I just, peep, that's, that's like a very grateful and, um, uh, perspective is everything but yeah I mean as far as the pandemic I mean that is yeah a lot of people are missing their their uh, spa treatments and and luckily I mean we just we just uh, gently uh, point out our products and the fact that um, the, the you know the pearl cleanser clay mask gold serum derma roller is a is a um, protocol that hundreds of med spas are using all around the world and so we just show them how to do that and if they want to create their own at-home facial out of uh, the comfort of their own home then we just encourage them on show them how to do it kind of like a diy facial but it's good life's good and i'm very grateful excellent andy andy you've got a great story uh, a lot of times uh, somebody's mess become becomes somebody else's message uh, mm -hmm. you're you were trying to organize your mess and you created a message out of it a business out of it uh, I was interviewing a lady a few weeks back and she went through a very bad divorce and then she started giving teach lessons on how to have a peaceful divorce. Uh, somebody's mess became somebody else's message. I think that's what exactly you have done and you've done it fabulously. fabulously. Your skin glows. Uh, you, all, you, look, you look perfect. Uh, you look perfect. There's no doubt about it. Uh, glad to have you on the panel. Uh, thank you so much, Andy. Uh, you're selling stuff on online, uh, online as well, Andy. Yes, uh, oh. alitura.com, a l i t u r a, dot com. Right, what, what platform? What platform do you? Um, use? Uh, right, right now we're on uh, uh, WordPress, WooCommerce, but um, we started off on Shopify, and we're debating on whether or not to uh, go back and migrate back. But I mean, that's kind of a an SEO, a little bit of an SEO disaster, and definitely don't want to be doing that in uh, Q4. So possibly. Q1 of uh, 2021, we'll be switching back to Shopify, but I'm not sure yet. We'll see. Mm -hmm. And what's your distribution of sales online versus offline? 99.5% online, 0.5% uh, retail, brick and mortar. It's online. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Uh, Matt, tell us your story. Uh, yeah, so I barely graduated high school uh, with a 1.9 GPA. I got my act together in college, and that's where I really fell in love with entrepreneurship, where I tried my hand at my first business, failed miserably, learned a lot of, learned a great lesson of I'm not, I'm not a tech person, so I need to not create businesses in tech. So I was really trying to just find my footing and to see what I was good at in the creation side. And so from there, I created a few other businesses that failed again, but fell in love with the process. It was a lot bigger than just the money or anything else like that. It was the true creation. And then I uh, was playing basketball one day, caught a knee right to the leg, tried all the typical recovery methods, ice, uh, ice cup, lacrosse ball, and a foam roller, none of which provided the relief I was looking for. So I just took their three, uh, one problem from each and tried to solve it with our product, the cryosphere, and <laughs> luckily was able to, and our first, our, our first customer was the San Francisco 49ers, which made me drop out of college uh, my last semester of my senior year. Um, $250 <laughs> made me give up all of that, but it was the best decision as I've, I've made and been growing very fast since then. Excellent. Wonderful. Uh, how much do you sell online versus offline? What platform do you use, Matt? Uh, so we're about 80% um, online, the other 20% is our B2B, and we're currently on Shopify. All right. 
Uh, thank you so much, Matt. Uh, a lot of courage is needed to start a business and you definitely have a lot of courage because you started five now. Uh, yes, we all learn from our failures and um, you have been featured on a lot of uh, a lot of magazines and a lot of places and thank you so much. Uh, good to have you on board. Thanks Liz. for having me. Most welcome. Uh, Liz, how has been the business last seven months? So at Lunia, we've been in a, in a bit of an um, enviable position in that we sell a product that is, a, you know, a product that you still need during, um, you know, during work at home. And uh, unlike other apparel brands, which I think really, you know, struggled a lot earlier, people who were um, producing streetwear or business clothes, you know, things that, that you needed to wear for work, shoes, um, you know, we have a product that is actually designed for your time at home and designed for that in-between space. So, um, you know, like many others, you know, the, the beginning of the panic uh, of the pandemic, you know, people sort of had a little analysis paralysis and kind of went into just stocking up on toilet paper and toothpaste and, you know, kind of those immediate steps. But then as soon as it became apparent that people were going to be home for a long time, um, I think, you know, people started saying, hey, I actually have the wrong wardrobe, you know, for this, um, this at home life. Uh, and so, you know, in, in that way, and because we're a DTC brand, and we did, you know, the majority of our business online, we do have some stores, but because the majority of our business is online, we were able to pivot to a work from home and able to like stay on track this year. So, I mean, we're continuing to grow, um, you know, in leaps and bounds, we were on the, um, Inc. fastest growing companies list, and we will, you know, continue to be growing at that pace. Um, you know, I think for us, the, you know, every time you grow, when you grow really fast, uh, the grow, the challenge is always to find things that are new that you can do to add to your marketing stack, because you have to do everything you did last year, plus that much all over again, right? And so it's you can't just take the tried and true. You always have to be testing, 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 and you know identifying new places to, to maintain the maintain the growth. Wonderful, excellent. Which platform you're on, Liz? We're on Shopify Plus. All right. So uh, you, you, how many SKUs do you have, Liz? Um, I, won't, I won't say exactly, but we have fewer SKUs than, than a, a typical fashion brand um, because we um, uh, because we have a lot of like very popular um, sellers, our washable silk set has been, you know, our best seller for, for years and years. And that, um, you know, that's a product that, you know, you need one in every color. And so, um, you know, uh, unlike something where you have to like, you know, always just be constantly following a trend. And I mean, we do have capsules and we do have styles that, um, you know, that, that, that come in, you know, new exciting products, but Unlike, you know, like a streetwear brand where you have to constantly chase and always put out new SKUs, you know, we're, we're not in that, in that position. And so, uh, you know, we tend to have a, a smaller set of SKUs than a fashion, you'd expect from a typical fashion brand. Excellent. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Liz. Uh, so uh, how are the numbers? Are the numbers uh, uh, better than the pre-COVID, post-COVID? Is the business growing? Uh, for us, we are, we are significantly... Up. I mean, we, uh, so I started at Lunia last September and we've doubled since I've, um, since I've been at Lunia, um, which is good since <laughs> I was hired to do growth. So hopefully we'd be growing. <laughs> um, yeah, but, uh, and, and our, our ambitions are big. Um, you know, we really believe that sleepwear is a category that everybody should have in their wardrobe, that the fact that you have this, um, uh, you have this item of clothing or the, you know, this, this area of your wardrobe that you're wearing at home. And if you think about what happens at home, that's actually the time when you're, you're your most authentic true self. It's the time when you're with, you know, like you, you're with your, your spouse or, you know, your friends or even your roommates or, or your, your close friends. It's actually the time when like the cool stuff in your, like the most important cool stuff in your life is happening. It, we just believe that it's crazy that you would wear throwaway clothes for what should be your most important time. Like, you know, people wear like old t-shirts or their husband's hand-me-down and it's sort of like, but 
but wait, like this is, this is the time. This is like that intimate moment that you have. This is that, you know, time where you're like, you know, hanging out in the kitchen, vibing off each other, and, and you're wearing your like clothes that don't make you feel good. Then you, that's the, like, you should wear the clothes that don't make you feel good out in public because those you're meeting a whole bunch of people you don't care about. The people you care about are at home. That's where you should, uh, that's where you should spend your time and effort. So <laughs> it's, it's all about the perspective. I think uh, you're going to force all of us to change our wardrobes. Um, and uh, thank you. It's all about perspective. Thank you so much for that perspective, Liz. Uh, it's a great perspective. I, I understand what you're doing in your, in the company. I, I understand you're doing your job well, and that's where the company is going hundred uh, X every year. Uh, thank you so much for being on this panel and we can learn a lot from you. Um, Amanda, uh, so tell us about your business. Uh, are you, you're also online. How do you, how do you sell uh, your stuff? Yeah, so we are primarily D2C. Um, our meal programs are um, uh, subscription-based, but also um, they're tailored um, by a, a couple of different parameters. So um, you can make changes for allergies. You can choose how many days a week you want, how many meals per day you want, and then your zip code. Everything is um, organic, gluten-free, vegan. So um, our, our, our procurement and production cycle is very, very fast. We close our order window on uh, Wednesday night at midnight. Um, all of the stuff is, all of the ingredients are then purchased. The food is then prepared and shipped out. So it, that core product, which our, our meal delivery um, is 100% D2C, there, there really um, would be no way for us to tailor the nutrition program in the way that we do if we were to go in store. So we don't think of ourselves as like a grab and go salad or a grab and go breakfast smoothie or something like that. It really is a holistic nutrition program. Not to say that we might, you know, develop products that are, you know, more suited to a grab and go environment in the future. Um, but that's not, you know, that's not our focus now. And that's certainly not what we do now. Um, we also have our line of shelf stable products, which are supplements, um, snacks, um, energy bars, things like that. Um, and similar to what Andy said, it's like 99% um, online. Um, we are sold in Sephora um, and um, we are dipping our toe into retail um, as we go, you know, kind of post pandemic life. Um, our focus has really been D to C. Our client is very, um, it's a very specific client. It's a very, um, you know, premium product. Um, and, you know, we are, we're sort of just kicking into that hyper growth phase, I would say. And I think everybody that's on this panel would understand, you know, when you're, when you're D2C, you have just so much more control over how your product is communicated, how it's presented. Um, you know, we want to make sure that we have uh, decent brand recognition before you're going into a Whole Foods and seeing our bar on a shelf next to, you know, 50 different types of bars. How do they know what makes us different? Um, so, so, so yeah, so for us online is definitely, um, is definitely the focus. D2C is definitely the focus and um, building more, you know, nationwide brand awareness is really our, our goal before we kind of explore those other channels. Are you on Shopify, Amanda? We're on Shopify Plus as well, yeah. Shopify Plus as well. Uh, excellent, wonderful. Uh, Amanda, how do you do, or do, do you know which customers will never come back to your store? Which customers will never come back? <laughs> Do you know them? Aren't happy. <laughs> um, you know, we are, you know, Sakara is. Um, In other words, words, if you do customer segmentation on online, uh, I, if you know customer segmentation, these are, these are my VIP customers. These customers are my loyal customers. These customers are potentially loyal customers. This customer perhaps will never come back. So do you know the customers who are not going to come, who are not going to come back ever? And if you know them, what's your strategy to bring them back? Yeah, I mean, we have certainly a lot of strategy. I think, you know, when, when you asked me to be on this panel, I said, I am the least digital person there is. I do all of the, what I own for the business is basically everything that's kind of non-digital. Not to say we don't touch digital, but I handle all of our brand partnerships. I handle any like celebrity um, 
influencer marketing, which is online, but a little different, um, PR, those sort of things. So when it comes to customer segmentation, it's certainly not the area of the business that I handle, but you know, food is, it's so personal and intimate and specific. So there are people that have tried our product and will never come back. And we're kind of okay with that. You know, it's not, um, it's not to say that we don't want to, to delight every person that orders our food, but even in just thinking like, you know, in my family, of course, everyone in my family has tried Saqqara. My father is a, you know, 245 pound former football player from, you know, Western Pennsylvania who likes to, you know, drink whole milk and, you know, eat meat on the grill. So is he going to want or appreciate a uh, 100% organic vegan meal delivery service with reasonable portion sizes? No, you know? So um, it, we're, we're not for every person. We don't intend to be the one and all be all, you know, solution for every single person eating food across the country. I think, um, you know, with our shelf stable products, that's where we aim to be more of, um, you know, a, a more universal product option. But even then, I think, you know, it's important to know who your client is and also who your client is not. And if someone falls into our funnel and tries us and ends up not being a fit, we're not gonna waste our energy, you know, marketing to those people. We wanna more aggressively market to the people who we have a chance of converting into a lifetime client versus, you know, winning back someone who tried us once and, you know, completely churned. Um, that's, that's just sort of the nature of our, of our business. Makes sense, make complete sense. I think what, what Amanda is suggesting guys is that uh, choose your customers. You cannot make everybody happy. Uh, you are in the business to do the right thing. You're not in the business to make everybody happy. Uh, the, they, they say the, the I do not know success to the, the key to success, but the key to failure is when you're trying to make everyone happy. Uh, so choose your clients carefully and make them happy. Uh, that's what Amanda is suggesting. Thank you so much, Amanda, for that. Uh, Andy, uh, are you a digital person? Do you get into data, details, analytics, or somebody else does it for you? That's a great question. I'm, I'm really into numbers. So you would think I'd be into stats and uh, uh, I would delegate that to uh, an employee that it was, it was being overlooked. We were just starting to get um, into the analytics, which obviously helped with segmentation of emails. Um, you know, like you said, just waking up some of those customers that maybe have only ordered once and maybe give them, giving them a little bit more value to, um, uh, their, their second order or possibly with a coupon or an add-on upsell, something like that. But um, yeah, it's, uh, we we're, we're just starting to get more into that data. Uh, it's a little bit differently run, a uh, little bit differently uh, of a ran of, of a business. We were shorter staffed, but it's just, uh, it's, it's kind of like one of those let go and let grow type situations right now. Um, where I'm just starting to delegate and hire specific people for certain roles, whereas before it was just myself and um, two other employees, but we, we outgrew that years ago. But it's just one of those things that I, I try to um, uh, just cover as many areas as I can and learn on the, on the go. I mean, I didn't really have a business background going into this, so I'm just, that's truly how it uh, evolved, but I love it. And, um, uh, yeah, we're, we're just starting to hire out specialists in those areas. Programs like Metric have helped out, um, Everflow uh, with affiliates. Um, yeah, they, they can, you know, cost per click, you know, open rates, everything. That's what affiliates want to see, especially with the big ones that we're using in, uh, in the um, wellness industry. So, yeah, we're just starting to get more into that. But luckily, that's a, a more like Amanda said, I'm more on the, the partnerships, uh, formulation, uh, product development. Um, and does uh, overseeing everything. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Uh, Andy, are you funded? You guys funded a bootstrap? Uh, I took a $20,000 loan, um, turned it into what it is now, but we, yeah, we haven't, we haven't uh, raised any money yet in cash positive from the beginning. So uh, what, awesome. is, what's the future? What's the, what's the vision for the company in the next three years, next five years? What's your vision? It's, there's a lot going on right now at this moment. So, I really can't tell you, but as far as what I would like to do, I have a couple companies that, that I just start are, you know, that I would like to emulate what they've done. Uh, La Mer being one of them. 
I just really, I love founder stories. I love Burt's Bees, Paul Mitchell, Lemaire, like I said, um, how they just, you know, how they grinded it out, out of a necessity, a problem they, that they helped solve for themselves. So, I mean, that's, that's what I wake up to. It's first thought in the morning, last before I go to bed. So we'll see what happens. But right now we've, we have some tough decisions as far as like transactions and stuff. So we'll see what happens, but I'm pretty confident that as long as we stay the course, things will go pretty well. Wonderful. Excellent. Andy. thank you so much for that input. Uh, sure. Matt, <clears throat> tell us about, uh, are you, are you funded Matt? Uh, yeah, we've, um, started out the business, um, <clears throat> with actually student loan money. And then my dad matched <clears throat> what I put into it. And then we've raised uh, $2.3 million to date. So uh, how do you choose your investors, Matt? Um, so I, we're very lucky to have some top level investors. Um, my, my, one of my personal favorite investors is AJ Vaynerchuk. You guys probably know his brother. Um, but AJ is operational minded, awesome person to deal with, um, not deal with, but work with. And he's such a great mentor. And so that's kind of what I first sought out for since I didn't have the business experience was the mentorship side, people that were willing to get their hands dirty and teach me how to do a lot of this stuff. Um, and so that's kind of what I looked for. And then when you ask them a lot of those questions, like, what do you invest in? Like, what do you see in it? And nine times out of 10, they're investing into the founder, not into the idea. So you got to make sure like you have conviction when you're pitching and a, a crazy confidence that this is going to work. And you're no matter what happens, you will make it work. Um, Cause a lot of the nitty gritty, it, they invest into you when co like, for example, like when COVID happens, like this is where they, this is where they put their money at is during this time. And when things look bleak. So just make sure, I would say like the self-confidence in there, even if you don't know, you just got to make it work. But yeah, that was something, it was pretty cool to hear that from him of that's how they truly invest. Not so, it's not the idea, it's the people behind it. Excellent. I think the great piece of advice, I think we, we, we all can learn a lot. So what Matt is saying, 90% of these times, the fabulous investors like AJ uh, invest in the people and not really in your idea. So if you are convinced that the idea will work and that, that conviction is being shown on your face, the investor will see a conviction and will put the money in. And of course, they'll give you the mentoring because they have put the money in. So uh, they got to mentor you as well. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Matt, for that valuable piece of information. Uh, Liz, uh, tell us about the investment status of at, uh, at Lunia and... Uh, uh, I'm, I'm guessing you might be cash positive and doing fabulous. Of course, under your leadership, the business has grown 100% in last last one year. Tell us about it. Yes. I mean, of course, the growth isn't entirely me, right? It takes a team. The entire organization has to work in concert in order to make that that growth happen. So it's coming from from you know every from every department, from every person who works at Lunia. Um, you know, we're pretty lucky to have a very passionate team. Um, and people who really believe in in the mission of Lunia and believe in the product, and so that makes it a little a little easier when you know things like COVID happen and you have and you have challenges. If you know everybody everybody feels the passion together to begin with, it makes it a lot easier to to work and you know uh, make the changes that you need to make to get you know to get a company through uh, COVID and to you know course correct where you need to course correct. Um, if, you know, if everybody on the team is, is working together. So, um, you know, it, for me, it was great. You know, it was one of the reasons why I came to Lunia was because of the team. And, you know, as you were talking about with Matt, you know, it's the people that make a business go. It's not just the, the idea, like you can have an idea, ideas are great, but if you can't execute on it, then, you know, it doesn't matter how wonderful the idea is. You have to have a team that can execute. So um, that's super important. Um, we're not VC funded. Oh, go ahead. You know sometimes bad ideas work if the people behind the bad idea are great. Uh, you're right. So people make the, all the difference. So uh, yeah. what, if you are a growth marketer, uh, Liz, I want to ask you what marketing tips can you give today? 
three top three marketing things can would you, if you can share your secret sauce <laughs> um i think the first thing i would say is diversification um that's one of the things we're working on um you know we're working on strongly at lunia is making sure that our that revenue channels are are diversified um while you're testing and learning and looking for winners you can't you kind of like bet on one channel delivering everything and i think in the in businesses that are all you know strongly online like our businesses it's really easy to fall in the trap of just you know only using facebook advertising or only using google advertising and trying to build a growth strategy out of that because you have all your eggs in one basket the same way you wouldn't say i'm only ever going to make one product or i'm only ever going to target one customer you have to diversify in order to grow um so that would be sort of my my number one tip like always be trying always be trying new channels always be trying new vendors you know never have have your eggs in in one basket um and then measurement and 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 data um you know i'm i'm definitely working with the team to build out our um data capabilities um you know we're implementing a customer data platform right now which will give us more you know customer segmentation um visibility to your to your earlier question about segmentation um because otherwise it's really easy to kind of uh, fall into a, a belief that something works just because uh, your employees have seen it or it feels good to do. But then when you actually look at the numbers and you track through and you look at the attribution, you figure out, oh, actually that's just like the noisiest channel. It's actually not my most productive channel. And sometimes the most productive things are things that are like not sexy at all. <laughs> you know, they're just like, you know, bread and butter good strategies email segmentation you know i have a new uh, retention director on my team that's just killing it in terms of like you know building out um some segmentation strategy and email and she has like dramatically increased you know the productivity of that channel for us and it's not you know it's not like sexy big ideas it's just bread and butter doing the work and like you know planning out this the strategy and so those some of those things which are like you know not the things that people see from the outside but they're the things that make you know make a business work um, and then there's kind of the opposite um, challenge as well, and that is like, don't be boring in marketing. I mean, the customer has so many messages, like coming at them from every single direction, like literally just scan through your Instagram feed. I mean, you know, ad after ad after ad, right? Like you're not going to remember any of them. So, you know, if the you know being a vanilla brand like you could have a great product but if you don't have a you know an interesting brand if you don't have something that resonates that your customer is going to you know like really attach to that's going to stand out and find interesting you know they've got a sea of sameness they've been presented with you know 100 different options in your space today what's the like fun awesome thing about you that breaks through and so you know for us I mean, we have a we have an edgy tagline. Our tagline is "Good in Bed." We don't shy away from talking about topics that are important. Um, you know, we're running a campaign right now called "Vote in Bed" because our tagline is "Good in Bed." So we just said, "Good in Bed, Vote in Bed," right? And so, you know, it's like if 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 you you know are willing to go after and kind of like get into the cultural conversation, you develop a lot more resonance with customers. The category. So those are my three things. <laughs> Diversification, measurement, and breakthrough. <laughs> Superb. Fabulous. Since you are a marketer, one, one last follow-up question to you uh, in this round. Uh, what's your ROAS? Return on ad spend. Yeah, so it, we, we're, we're sort of interesting in that we actually do plan different channels to ROAS. Um, and uh, you know, return on ad spend. So it depends on what the channel is. We have different targets for each channel based on um, you know what that particular channel is, and whether we're looking at um, in-platform ROAS or whether we're looking at like kind of combined ROAS or something that you know measured on the back end from our side. So each for us, each channel has a different target, but we you know we everything we go after we're you know we're really performance oriented. So. You know, I I won't keep spending in Facebook if the if the ROAS you know for that particular segment of what I'm trying to do you know starts going going down, um, and so that's or another reason for the need for diversification. You know, if you're doing ads on Facebook and Instagram and Google, uh, what's the most promising channel for you? 
Uh, well, it's interesting because we have the politicals happening right now. So um, it sort of changed the dynamic of, of the cost structure of, you know, of channels right now. So channels which weren't performing are performing more. So for us, the channels that are performing well are, ch are channels that are more shopping oriented as opposed to like Google shopping and stuff like that, as opposed to channels which are getting inundated with political advertising. So, you know, the places, uh, you know, if, if somebody's looking for sleepwear, they're searching for sleepwear, they're in a shopping space, that's, that's still highly productive right now. Um, whereas any place where you have to go compete, you know, your dollars have to compete for the ad space with political, um, you know, and our, our girl, you know, who, who likes to buy our product, she's, you know, she's upscale, she's educated, she's, um, you know, she's very interested in the issues, like, you know, she loves the news, she loves finance, she loves tech, um, she, she, yeah, she loves fashion too, and, and art and, and culture, but if you think about that audience, you know, there are a lot of political advertisers kind of going after that same audience right now, so places like, you know, news content or something where previously we, we would have done really well, you know, it's just so saturated right now that the costs are out of control. <laughs> understandable, totally understandable. Uh, thank you so much, Liz, for those fabulous tips uh, of marketing. Really appreciate you uh, being a giver, uh, not shying away from giving away your secrets. It, it, feels, <laughs> great, it, it feels great to be a giver. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Andy, uh, tell us about, uh, so you, you have been primarily online and you're doing a lot of product development and primarily in the product development partnerships. So uh, are, you, are you also doing a lot of ad spend? Am I also, I'm sorry, what was the question? Doing a lot of ad spend. Do ad love, spend. love ad spend? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's interesting you bring that up. We, we, uh, we cut our, our media, um, the, the agencies, just in the beginning of the pandemic, just because we wanted to keep it really lean. We didn't really know what was going on. And also, I don't know if anybody else can relate as far as like, the, the Amazon agencies or maybe the Facebook agencies that you really want to figure out. I mean, I didn't really know the, the space as far as if they were targeting our, our own customers already, or maybe if they were lookalikes, I didn't know enough about the Facebook ads, Instagram ads, anything that, but so we'd meet, but our numbers weren't really changing from the year before. So what I did is I cut those and then focus, you know, worked a little bit harder, got on more podcasts, got on more um, guest spots, articles, tracked it with the coupon code, in our numbers, like, you know, we're at 39% growth over and then with the strong key four, we want to double just like you is. So the thing is, it's like, I, that's been the biggest thing for me is really, I mean, getting in there and having, bringing someone in house as far on the ad space. Right. And so, and then really having them grind all day long and then having them show you, show me um, results. Luckily, uh, I mean, a guy that I went to high school with kind of started seeing some ads flow through because in our, in June, we didn't run anything until June just because I'd rather, we were still growing lightly just through word of mouth. I mean, seriously, that's how it's been. We want to keep it lean and podcasts are free for the, yeah, I've never paid for a podcast. And that's one of those things where you can also track net, track your, you know, people bring it in because a lot of, a lot of people are starting to know the brand, but also the story behind it. And then, so luckily from like a resilience aspect or skin, skincare, natural products, any, there, we, we can get into a lot of different areas. So that's how it's, that's how our growth has really happened is through those podcasts getting in those really just pounding the pavement and then uh, believing in um, that, believing in the story and also definitely the products. I mean, the formulation behind it, we're doing something different. So um, kind of going on a tangent here, but as far as uh, yeah, fa uh, social media ads and, and ad spend, it's, it's like you said, Liz, I'm not going to invest in anything that, you know, after everything, as far as um, you know, cost of goods, if it's not 2.53, I'm going to pull back a little bit. Um, and then the cost to acquire that customer. It's, I, I just really want to keep it at a reasonable level, 31 to 33, you know, starts getting up 50, 60, 70 to acquire that customer. Even though our initial order is 117, lifetime value is high. I just, uh, you know, we want to curb, curb that a little bit and just be very smart about where we invest our, um, our money into uh, marketing. Cause it's fun. There's a lot of like, we want to, and then we want to celebrate our customers. That's a big thing that we're doing right now, rather than working with influencers or any certain influencers, we just maybe we want to celebrate our customer. So that's, uh, that's what we're doing. Great thought, uh, Andy. Uh, so it's not just your products, even your strategies to bring in your customers are also natural and organic. Uh, yeah. yeah. Great. Uh, Matt, tell us about, uh, 
growth versus profitability uh are you trying to get more and more customers burn more cash get more customers burn more cash get more customers or uh, do you also plan to get profitable someday uh, how is how is what are your investors saying what are you saying what are you doing about it yeah so the one thing that we had to really overcome was we were kind of the first to ever really create a cold roller product for muscle recovery so we had to burn a lot of cash on education to get it up and going um you'll you'll see some of our knockoffs on alibaba but if you look at like how much they've sold in the last six months i think it's like six or seven million dollars worth of a pr product that is almost that's pretty identical to ours and so we had to really build that education side in like how to figure out to become a premium brand and last year we grew from 827,000 to 4 million in revenue so about 426 percent growth and when you're doing cpg um it's very hard to to focus on profitability but um COVID luckily allowed us for the first time to truly slow down and allowed us to overhaul so much stuff. And we've had to do a complete team turnover. And now we have these very high level people, um, actually some very high level guys from Under Armour, pretty, we're kind of rebuilding Under Armour here um, with their top guys. And so like they're so focused on profitability, every number, every metric to increase that bottom line while still maintaining that top line revenue growth. And so we've, we've had a pivot because growing top line isn't the thing, isn't what investors are looking for anymore. It's that profitability, how quickly you can get to it. And so it's been a very fun transition. I've learned, I've been able to learn a lot from it and it's kind of fun to really focus on all these little details to get that to that profitability that truly add up of uh, switching from one mailer to another saved us 50 cents but when you send out uh let's say like 50,000 units in a month or so that 50 cents adds up super super quick and so that's where you, i think it's a lot of fun and you have sometimes you have to accelerate that growth if you are lucky to raise money but key is like focus on profitability and then then while you're raising money because it cash is king especially right now <laughs> Fabulous, uh, Matt. That's true. That's absolutely true. So, Matt, uh, when will you become profitable? Are you all, are you already profitable? Um, we're gonna be. We'll probably we'll be profitable this year. And so, part of this turnover was we were running at a five hundred thousand dollar loss, but before COVID, we were on track to grow almost six hundred percent for the year. And <clears throat> so, we had to slow down, but we've been able to turn it around very, very quickly in six months to eliminate that half a million dollar burn and to get to profitability. So I think that kind of speaks to of like the people I have behind us. So we have uh, my fractional CFO, Caroline Gash. She's done some amazing work. Um, she was a CFO for half a billion dollar energy fund at the age of 28. And she came in and she changed it all around in less than six months. So it's pretty cool to see that. And, there we're very lucky for those for those people excellent wonderful i mean that's exactly what uh, henry ford said henry ford said uh, the smartest people in the room would hire people who are smarter than them uh, you hire people who are smarter than you and then you can you can you can chill you can relax because they're doing their job fabulously well and they will run the show for you uh, that's the best part of having the smart people around you uh, thank you so much matt uh, that's a great learning uh, Amanda, uh, so uh, do you, are you seeking investment in the future or uh, no? Um, so Sakara has raised money in the past. Um, we, uh, our founders bootstrapped the company from eight, $800 uh, starting in 2011 and didn't raise money until 2015. Um, the meal delivery side of our business, because we closed sales before ordering raw ingredients. It has been profitable since day one. It's never run on any type of a loss and really um, been really smart about how, how it's marketed. Um, and like I said, it has always been profitable. Um, in 2015, they raised a series A. 
Um, and that was to open a kitchen in LA. So we have kitchens in New York and LA now, and we ship nationwide. Um, with the CPG side of the business, which Matt alluded to, um, is a little bit different in terms of how you grow, how you invest. Obviously, there's a lot of inventory that has to be purchased. Um, our products are not cheap. Our ingredients are top of the line and quite expensive. Our margins are not as uh, good as we'd like them to be, but we don't think that they're ever going to get you know, comparable to like, I won't name any <laughs> other brands, but other uh, companies in the, you know, energy bar space, just as an example, they're not using, you know, certified organic ingredients that are sustainably sourced and these, you know, super premium, which I'm sure is kind of similar to Amy's company, like the super premium ingredients, you're not going to have, you know, 20% cogs on, on a product. We're just never going to get there. So um, as far as investment, you know, we had been using the profits from our meal delivery business to basically fund the growth of our CPG side. And now, you know, we're, we're looking to switch that up a bit. We don't want to, you know, cannibalize the profitability of one side of the business to fund the other side of the business. So um, I think we'll be making some, you know, exciting announcements around new funding in 2021. Um, but we've been, we have been fortunate just that our business model is such that we don't, you know, with the food, we, we don't carry any inventory because you can't, you know, you can't have organic greens sitting on a shelf waiting for someone to buy them. We don't pay any money for our raw ingredients, which is the bulk of our costs um, until someone has actually transacted and, and, and given us that money. So you have, you have a kitchen in, in New York and you have a kitchen in LA. Uh, they are six hours away in a flight uh, and uh, how do you, so what are the top logistics issue do you face and how do you resolve them? Oh my. So it's funny, Danielle and Whitney, who are our founders and, and they were not, you know, business people before they started Sakar. They were really just dreamers with a mission. Um, and they always say like, if they had been, you know, business people prior to starting Sakara, they never would have started this business because logis the logistics of our business are so complex. Everything spoils in 48 hours if it is not, you know, perfectly temperature controlled. It has to be packaged and shipped across the country. Um, we have, you know, two different kitchens producing the same product at the same time for different clients. So making sure that customer experience is, you know, at the same level um, when, when your meals are coming from New York versus when they're coming from LA. Um, our operations team, they are, are wizards. Um, so I think, you know, if I had to say like what our biggest uh, operational or logistical com com concern is now, it's how do we get more sustainable? So we just brought a new chairman onto our board um, who comes from Burt's Bees and Seventh Generation and is really committed to, you know, sustainability. And, you know, it's a car because we are proponents of a plant-based diet, you know, that's one of the number one things you can do to make your own lifestyle more sustainable is to, you know, eat less animal products. Not, you know, you don't have to go vegan, but the more plants that you eat, you know, you're, you're creating less you know, fossil fuels, all that kind of stuff. However, we ship fresh food across the country. The, that packaging needs to keep the food fresh. So right now, while we do use post-consumer plastic, it's still plastic. Um, and so that is our biggest logistical hurdle right now and for the next three years. How can we keep our business growing? How can we keep the quality of our meals, the integrity of the food that you're receiving and the, um, you know, we're not shipping loose ingredients. We're shipping you fully prepared you know, beautiful, fresh food. So how can we become a more sustainable brand while still keeping, you know, the business alive and the food high quality? That is our biggest logistical concern. And it is a huge one to tackle, not only because it's the right thing to do and it's important, but also because our client is very concerned about sustainability. Um, we're fortunate now that we do have a new chairman who is also very concerned about sustainability. So he's okay with, you know, margin, you know, some, some, you know, margin hit. I don't want to say like, yeah, do whatever you've got to do to get sustainable. We still have to make money. Right. Um, but so that I would say is the biggest uh, logistical concern for us in 2021 and beyond. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Amanda, uh, for that uh, information. Uh, Andy, there, there are customers who come and go. There are clients who stay with a little longer. 
and your fans who love you. How do you make your customers into your fans? Um, that, well, just <clears throat> that's that's why I really want to self start self fulfilling is be, is to show them the little the personal touch that really, I mean, just was uh, was natural from the beginning. I mean, I couldn't believe I got an order. And so I would write little notes on the packaging. Thank you so much. And those, I mean, the, to this day, I'll still get a little order note from them. I mean, I had to turn off the notifications, but I, I mean, it's a little, it's a thrill. I mean, to this day, that and the reviews, it's why I do what I do, period. Um, I just, uh, as far as, so it's, it's, we're working on that right now, maintaining that personal touch. And, and so there's a comp, I just don't want to say, uh, yeah, it's the whole like that personal touch, the writing. I, there's we're, we're there's uh, we're, we're doing that, especially uh, and to to not only to our, our our VIPs, but I mean to to everyone. But that's that's there are the Alatura family. Seriously, I mean from the beginning, that's just something where I'll still fire back on, on the emails. I'm all in the uh, the DMs on Instagram. It's just I'm, this is so much fun for me. And it's such a, a great impactful industry where you can get in there and, and really help people feel better about what they see in the mirror. And, and, and so that it's a really, really personal, uh, it, it's my life. I don't want to call it a business, but I mean, it, but it's just, it's something where I'm glad you asked that just because it's, it's, it's easy writing the emails. People know if it's me or if it's a ghost writer, uh, you can tell, I mean, it's just one of those, uh, one of those things that I love to do. And I, I want to dedicate more time to maintaining that that personal touch um, aside for every every part of it, whether it's our, our products, the bottle. I mean, it takes, I don't just roll out full, you know, full already um, studied product. It's, it's ingredient by ingredient. It takes years, you know, to formulate. I mean, it has to be different. And so um, people appreciate that. And then, and then just, and then showing them the journey along the way different revision steps, traveling to find a, a little bit more on, uh, about an ingredient that I, that I, I found out about and just, just involving them in the story through our emails and, uh, and our blogs and uh, social media. I love it. So yeah, that's, that's, uh, that's how we do it. But we, when we're going to we're going to do a little bit better of a job of that because we want to, we want to, um, that's why we want to uh, fulfill in house. That's a fabulous tip. Andy, so and what Andy is suggesting is just go personal guys, uh, try to personalize, whatever you're doing, connect with your people, make your customers your, your heroes and do not be really worried about influencers. Try to narrate your story. Andy has a fabulous story and when he is going out to look for an ingredient which he has spent some time on to find, he would narrate the story in a manner we can connect with the, with the customers and that's when you're able to make your customers into your fans. Uh, thank you so much, Andy, for that. Uh, in this last round, guys, if you guys have any question to a fellow speaker, please go ahead and shoot now. I think I, I, I'll, I'll go first. I'd be interested in, um, I, it, it's interesting because we just came off a conversation talking about using, you know what I mean, like speaking with customers, but then customers are also your biggest advocates to introduce new people to the brand. Um, and it sounds like Andy, you've done some work in that space. I, I, Amanda, you started off the, the comp up by saying that the influencer team reported to you. So um, I'd, I'd kind of be interested and you know, Matt, you had like a really high profile first customer. I, I'd just definitely be interested in hearing from everybody a little bit about, you know, you, um, how you integrate customer stories into your marketing and what's, what's been working in that space. I can touch on this because this is everything for Sakara. <laughs> it really is everything for Sakara, and it's so much of what I do personally. Um, Sakara grew organically for the first five years. We had a lot of, uh, and I wasn't there for that part, <laughs> part of, the, of the growth, but um, you know, a lot of celebrity clients that came to it organically and spoke positively of the brand. A lot of people who you know didn't have Instagram then, but are considered influencer now. Um, were, were, you know, some of our first clients. Um, we also have a huge community of health coaches, nutritionists, doctors who build out our quote unquote affiliate program. So we have kind of two affiliate programs, one of which I don't understand and couldn't have anything to do with, which is like, you know, the link sharing more of the, the digital side. And then we have this huge troop of really inspiring individuals who go out and share Sakara, who have been clients 
who generally have some form of um, certification, whether they're an RD, an MD, and you know, an R, something in the health and wellness world, who then go out and share Sakara and are commissioned on the back end from us. So that's like one piece of it. We obviously have a great influencer um, community, and we're constantly feeding our influencers. We're really fortunate in that we have a product that people really want. Um, so it's kind of easier, and it's a product that not only that that they really want, but people are just taking pictures of their food all the time, you know? So it's a really easy product to share. It's not like, you know, here's this, you know, it's, it's very like, oh, I'm eating this beautiful salad. I'm, you know, sitting in my, you know, in my living room, drinking a Saqqara tea, whatever. It's, it's, it's easy, an easy product to share. Um, but then we also, um, as Andy said, we get so many testimonials. I mean, there's a lot of things that we can't claim that our products do. Um, you know, we can't claim that eating plant-based cures cancer. We can't claim that it's going to clear, you know, there's claims that we can't legally make, but our clients share these stories with us every single day. And we can absolutely share those stories. So we have a podcast, which I also um, executive produce that's hosted by our founders. And one of the things that we do at the end of almost every episode is we share a testimonial from a client. So if I've had a fertility expert on the podcast doing an interview about fertility, at the end of the show, we'll share a story. Hi, my name's Jane. I live in, you know, Texas. I, um, you know, wasn't getting a period regularly. My doctor told me, hey, you should try eating less processed food. Try a plant-based diet. I went on Sakar for six months. My period regulated and, and two months later I was pregnant. You know, we share those stories um, because we have so many of them. And, um, and, and we're fortunate that we have those to share, but um, people, you know, when you change their life, even in a small way, you know, I used to work in hospitality. I believe that one good party can change a life. You know, it doesn't need to be, you know, curing cancer or whatever. I think everybody on this call, you know, creates a product that could potentially change someone's life in a small way or, or a big way. And people are eager to share those stories. And not only that, People love having their stories shared publicly. Everyone wants to be tagged in an Instagram post by a brand that they're obsessed with, and then they share it in their story. You know, people love that feedback loop. So I would say absolutely our founders are on calls with clients every week. We make it a point to block time for them to call people, email people, follow people on Instagram, engage with their posts. They, that's their favorite part of the business. It's not like we have to force them to do it. We just have to force them to block the time to do it. Um, so yeah, I think, you know, the more that you make your, you, you make your clients feel like their stories matter. Um, and, and so we, you know, we actively share these stories with the hashtag Sakara stories, and then we get more stories. And the more, you know, the more stories that we get, whether they're coming in through social, whether they're coming in through our client services team, when you hear someone else share their story on a podcast that you're listening to, you're like, I have a story, I should, you know, send it to them. So it's a lot of this like social proof um, that, that, that comes in. And um, yeah, it's been, it's been really powerful for us. And I think it sets us apart from other, you know, brands in our space. Fabulous, wonderful, excellent. Andy, you want to go next? Oh, well, I mean, I, I just I was trying to think of a question. That's awesome. I, we, we do a very similar uh, thing. Well, we, we have a, a person dedicated specifically to follow up. If someone posts, uh, you know, like, like as you mentioned, Amanda, everybody's taking pictures of food. You, with our clay mask, a lot of people are taking, you know, they love, oh, the green monster. Oh, I look like the Hulk or something like that. Couples are taking pictures together, whole families. And so that started off is kind of like a, you know, I, I got that idea from Frank's Coffee Scrub years ago, 2013, 2014, when I was just starting to get into this. And um, all I would ask for was just some type of feedback or maybe a picture with it. And then I'd start to post it. And then um, that's a great idea to get the Sakara stories. I, I want to try to figure out, I mean, the Alatura difference. We want to get some type of um, hashtag like that just to make it more, just more kind of uh, shareable and have it, you know, track back to Alatura. But really what we'll do is we'll have uh, someone, I mean, cause our reviews, we would, I mean, uh, that when they come in, the, the, the bigger ones, the more profound ones, we'll follow up with them and say, Hey, just saw your review. I actually recorded a video where we'll just send a little YouTube link uh, to the customer 
and then just going, hey, saw your review. Thank you so much for that. If, if um, there's any way we could pretty much just, if you could record a 30 to 45 second video with your, basically with what you just said, we'll give you any product that you want uh, for free. And so at that, to me, that's, that's, that's worth it. Uh, we, and I'll, I mean, I, I really, I mean, I, we have crunched some numbers as far as like how profitable it is. It's just a lot of fun for us. And then also, like you mentioned, man, I mean, it's, they love it too. I mean, it's, God, I can't tell you, I've been in tears uh, sometimes. I mean, that, that 30 to 45 seconds turned into four minutes one time. And it's just, it's unbelievable. It really makes my day. And then also, like, like you mentioned, I mean, it's just, they love it too. And so, and it's, there's, yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun. I love doing it. And so that, that's been a big, big part of it, just celebrating the customer experience. And then it's just, it's a really profound, um, you know, when you have the, the before and afters, especially with acne, rosacea, eczema, you name it. And so they, they it gets really emotional, which is great. Fabulous, wonderful, Andy. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, anyone have any further question? Oh, I know we're, we're running over time, but I, my question is around um, offline sales channels. So like moving more into retail, once the pandemic is over and people are like back on the streets, is that something that any of your brands are um, thinking about tackling uh, more or do you want to stay more omni-channel with all the sales coming? And I mean, say omni-channel meaning all the sales coming from your website, not other you know, third-party sellers or, or retail. Well, I'll answer part of it quickly. We actually have some retail stores ourselves, um, and we had um, aggressive growth plans in the retail space. Um, uh, not wholesale, but, you know, retail, our own um, places before the pandemic. We're a little um, slower, uh, you know what I mean, in terms of how we're building, but that is still part of our strategy. As a matter of fact, I think we may be the only DTC brand that opened a brand new store in the middle of the pandemic in Atlanta. Um, so um, not all of our, our stores are open yet because it depends on, you know, kind of on the neighborhood, but our New York store is open in Olita and Soho. Um, and so that's kind of fun because, you know, our team in New York is just super excited to be able to like, you know, host customers in the store again. I, I feel like that's, you know, the very, that direct contact with customers, that personal connection is, um, uh, is very motivating for, for employees versus going all digital and, you know, we're doing all the precautions and you have to wear a mask and we sanitize everything and, you know, people only a certain number of people in the store. We're doing a lot of appointment based visits to the store, which is great. Um, but we did open in Atlanta um, just this month too. And it's been going great. Um, once again, you know, all the precautions staying, you know, sanitized and all that. But I think that, you know, people really enjoy the personal connection and if they feel like, uh, and if they feel like the space is going to be safe for them, they actually crave some, some human interaction. And so if we can do it in a safe way, um, you know, some of our best customers actually are, you know, are really happy that, you know, we're back and, and open and have that additional channel. And so for us, it's, we're direct to consumer brands. We, we want to say mostly direct. We're not going to like, you know, go onto Amazon or something, but we do believe that the person to person interaction is an important, important part of, of what we can offer as a brand. Fabulous, wonderful. Uh, Matt, do you want to add something? Yeah, so that's actually kind of as we're pivoting, because our B2B channels are much different than a lot of people think. Um, we're, we don't go big box. We go to physical therapists um, where people are getting hurt and injured. And so <clears throat> we're seeing, starting to see that pick back up as they're starting to see people again. But I think post-pandemic, I think the retail space is going to be super interesting because you have Dick Sporting Goods that's growing big. That's very, where you're seeing that now. But I think there's gonna be a huge amount of open retail space coming up here. And people are gonna start figuring out what to do with this space, which I think opens up a huge amount of opportunity um, to restructure and repurpose it. And I think it's a, I think it's a really good chance to think differently and get some of these or the direct to consumer is a great model, but if we can get product out to these people and have them touch it as Liz uh, mentioned of let's get this in front of people. Let's talk to them. Let's educate them. Let's really give that personal touch. I think that's where it's going to lie at. And I think there, like I said, I think there's gonna be a huge opportunity post pandemic. And as people start figuring out what to do with these empty commercial spaces is going to be super cool and interesting. And I'm really excited to see how that goes and this new opportunity that can pop out from it. Me too, me too. <laughs> <laughs>
fabulous uh, thank you thank you so much guys thank you very much uh, it's time we have to conclude uh, you guys have been fabulous uh, you guys such a giver uh, when when you are giving something away you can really feel uh, very proud about it all of you have did not shy away from giving your secret sauce um, so therefore it's my responsibility also to give you something now right now so guys as you might know we have a shopify magento app a uh, big commerce e commerce app uh, that helps in uh, increasing your ROAS return ad spend to 10x uh, with journey uh, people are doing 3x or 2x and we have some fabulous features built using artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, which is helping shopify merchants web uh, woocommerce merchant uh, wordpress merchants to have 10 over and we're going to give it give it to the speakers uh, free for 45 days uh, use it explore it and we got five stars on shopify so uh, that's our uh, that's our give to you today thank you so much guys thank you very much i'm going to sending out the link today thank you so much really had a good time talking to you all thank you thank, thank you appreciate it <laughs> thanks guys bye bye bye